First of all, I want to thank you for coming to this presentation on consent decrees. And I can truly say if you're here looking at this, it's probably because you are either in a consent decree or have a real strong feeling that you're going to go into a consent decree, or you may be in negotiations with regard to this. In any way that comes about with this, you're in a very, very tough situation. I, I really feel for you. I've gone through that before. Uh, I've certainly helped people out of that, uh, as are, have a number of us here. And it is a very tough situation. I can say if you really are in need for some immediate help, give us a call, 513-860-3512. And you can certainly visit our website. Uh, we have a lot of information on there that would hopefully give you some insight and some help on this. And you can certainly email us. So let me get started with this, a consent decree. So what is a consent decree? It's an agreement between the FDA and a company. It really is arbitrated by the court. It is a legal contract. It is used to resolve matters quickly and save the cost of litigation. There's a lot of information that goes on. This takes a lot of effort by the FDA to get a consent decree in place. I, beyond what you may think, the FDA really doesn't like a consent decree. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of manpower, a lot of money on their part to implement it, oversee it, put it together. And they don't want to go down that route, but they will do it. And it, it certainly has been done many, many times. Uh, it is a terms generally controlled by the FDA through the court. And there's certainly some standard formats. If you go out and look on the internet for consent decree, a pharmaceutical consent decree, you'll see the various companies that have gone under it. You'll see the various uh, consent decrees out there. You can look at those and understand what it is that's coming your way. The uh, FDA and consent decrees, there's no real policy on it. There's some guidance on there, uh, out there with it. I, I provide it here with a bit of uh, guidance. Uh, there's a procedures manual out there. The, the FDA's purpose with this is very succinct. It's to halt the flow of violative product into interstate commerce. And they're really there to make sure that the conditions what they, which they saw were egregious enough to cause a consent decree are being corrected. It does not preclude the FDA from further regulatory action. You have to make sure you are fully aware of that, that they can come in and still hammer you for things, even though you've signed a consent decree. Uh, typically, they won't unless you really are just arrogant about it. But I, I can say uh, you, you always have to bear that in mind. There's a... Uh, a standard model with this, there's an introductory section, it's unnumbered paragraph establishing that a, a complaint for injunction uh, was filed with a specific date, naming each corporate and individual defendant. Understand you will be signing these things, you and management, this is going to be very tough for you to sign because your name's going to be down for everyone to see. It's a transmittal directive that states it is hereby ordered a judge and decreed that whatever it is that comes after that and it typically is very long and very painful there's a paragraph establishing the court's jurisdiction over you and what you do and there's a paragraph stating that the claim for relief is appropriate whatever it is that's in there that that this is appropriate there's a paragraph also establishing that the defendant and all those in active concert with him or her are permanently enjoined by this consent decree. It's a statutory site for the definition of the article of a consent decree. I know I'm going into some legalese here with it, but it's important for you to understand this. There's a statement that the defendants are permanently enjoined from committing Ill, any illegal act with respect to the article. If activities are to resume under, after corrective actions are implemented, there will be terms to ensure compliance with the decree. Typically, it's going to be a lot of oversight, and uh, you're going to have a lot of third-party oversight out there. And I know this because I, I've been involved in some of this stuff. There's going to be a paragraph providing for additional inspection authority. 
There will be requirements imposed on defendants should additional inspections reveal other problems. I, I can tell you, you don't want to get to that stage. You're, you're in real deep trouble if you get to that point. There's reimbursement for additional inspection costs and contempt proceedings. If you go down that route, you're going to pay for it, and you're going to pay for it dearly. There will be a notice to those associated with the defendants. Anyone that you do work with as a company, you have to send them notice that you're under consent. Anyone you buy material from, anyone that does work for you, anywhere along the line, be it a, a pest and rodent control person to the active pharmaceutical ingredients, you will have to notify them. And certainly there's optional notice to, to your customers as well. There's optional notice to employees. Uh, these are negotiation points. You see the bullet points here. Uh, there are optional recall, refund provisions, destruction provisions. There's notice to FDA prior to changes in corporate structure. If the president, the board changes, whatever, they have to be informed. Uh, there's standard of review uh, provision, how to go to court, uh, continuing jurisdiction, cost, signature page, that's the end of it. Everyone signs this huge giant document saying, yeah, we agree to it. Now, understand this. Individual corporate executives as well as firms may be named in the consent decree as incentive to fix the problem. Like the picture shows here, you have a target on your back. You are very much in line for these activities going on. You will be named in the consent decree. The firm agrees to specific provisions that are detailed in there and you sign it and therefore it is law. Seizure consent decree uh, that things can go on egregious enough that they can um, take your material whatever it is it's condemned and it's destroyed. There's a withdrawal claim uh, there may be a recondition type of factor in there these are all really uh, out there for specific individual issues that go on with your company and I can say typically it's going to be that you call it back and you destroy it uh, after a period of time. It all has to be laid out in the consent. The reconditioned terms uh, seized products are in violation of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The firm is to pay court costs fees, storage costs, and any other costs of seizure. I can tell you this, it's going to be very expensive. You have to purchase a bond, which is twice the value of the seized good, to be paid by the firm if anything goes on. Just make sure you understand all of this. The firm must notify the FDA when it's ready to recondition and wait for written permission from the FDA that this is okay. This is going to take a lot of effort from you to get this done. The firm may not dispose of seized products and must provide the FDA access to them before and after reconditioning. I can tell you this, they're going to want to be there, they're going to see it, they're going to be aware of everything that you do. The firm must abide by FDA's decision to the point. You cannot deviate from that. The firm must pay for the cost of FDA supervision of any reconditioning or retesting. Firm must provide copies of documents showing what you did. Uh, this is all going to be laid out and it's going to be very time consuming. Injunction. The FDA will recommend a firm and its officials when significant violations are not adequately addressed that you're permanently enjoined. FDA's objective is to cease operations until the firm is compliant. This is a very bad situation to be in. If you're in a situation like this or it's going down that path, uh, I, hopefully you've already sought legal counsel, you're in the midst of it, get some very good legal counsel, get some very good people in there to help you. The FDA is going to want to talk about third-party oversight. Make sure you understand who you're getting in there and what they're capable of doing. Uh, there's some very large firms out there, some very small firms. I can say I'm in a, a, a moderate-sized firm, and th they all offer different ways to get it done. Make sure 
that the way that they get it done, the third-party oversight, meets with your company's objectives. Don't just say, ah, we're going to get this giant company in and get this going forward uh, and it not mesh with how you act as a company. You really have to make sure that you can work with your third-party oversight. And um, I, I can say, you want to talk to them. People will promise you the moon and the stars, but uh, sometimes that's way beyond their capability and uh, they can't really do that. So really understand what you're dealing with here. Injunction trends, the three most common violations resulting in injunction cases. Deviation from the GMP, obviously, this is why you're in this situation anyway. Marketing a product with FDA, without FDA approval and labeling and promotion. Those last two are big items there. Uh, I can say deviations from the GMPs really takes a lot of effort on the company's part to get to that point. Um, I, I can say uh, you've, you've taken some wrong paths getting to this stage. Uh, there is a way out. You just need to make sure you're aware of how to get there and how to get out. It's going to take some work though. Uh, FDA tends to select large, well-known companies to go under uh, consent decree injunction, and uh, certainly the FDA has been requesting large fines. I put here fine with this. It's called a disgorgement uh, cost, and it's uh, really they consider any profit that you've made from illegal activities, making violative drugs, which are uh, outside of GMP compliance as ill-gotten gains, so they call that disgorgement. Recent changes in consent decrees, there's restitution, there's disgorgement, that's certainly the fines we were talking about here. There's a real key reliance upon third-party review. That is very much the trend, it's been the trend for a while, and I see it going forward with this uh, always. Uh, they really want someone else to come in and oversee you and that third-party oversight is going to have some real uh, restrictive actions for you as a company to make sure that they are not uh, really going to be in the problem. And you really need to, again, work with a third party, make sure that you can work with them and that they can work with you. The inclusion of penalties for contempt of consent, that's a big thing coming up. Uh, you don't want to get to that point. Just make sure you understand what you're doing. I'm going to talk about some different consent decrees here, and these are all public knowledge. Nothing I'm going to talk about here is uh, certainly any secret information. Just gives you a sort of an oversight of what the FDA has gone into courts talking about and what the court has agreed to and the company has agreed to. Why is there steer? This is a, a older one now. They had to pay $30 million to settle the GMP deviation case. Uh, three corporate executives were permanently enjoined from introducing adulterated drugs into interstate commerce. There was an independent expert, third party, had to come in, and they had to go through everything. Wyeth had to cor correct the deviations per an FDA schedule. Wyeth had to pay $15,000 per day up to $5 million for failure to meet their FDA schedule. Wyeth had to pay 18.5% of net sales of any product manufactured at a particular facility if the schedule was not met. An, in, an independent expert must review FDA approved sampling of all products at another site. Really, they had a lot of people there overseeing a lot of activities. Continuing on with that Wyeth uh, consent, an independent expert must prepare an FDA approved validation plan for bulk manufacturing at different facilities and the expert must certify that the validation is adequate. An independent expert must review all finished products at this facility except for five types of products that were being made. For one year a qualified employee must monitor Marietta personnel for compliance with SOPs. And an independent expert must review Wyeth's QAQC program and Wyeth must make corrections per an FDA approved plan. The independent expert body that went in there really had a lot of power to try to direct Wyeth into a compliance situation. 
Elan Holdings, they were permanently enjoined uh, from manufacturing, processing, labeling, introducing uh, products out there that didn't meet GMPs. Executive officers of the firm and a parent company were named in the consent decree. An independent FDA-approved expert, that third party, must submit a report and certify in writing that the company is in compliance. And I can tell you, before I sign anything certifying that a company is in compliance, I'm going to make sure that the company is in compliance. And it's going to be a lot of work between the third party, an independent expert, and the company to make sure that is indeed the case. The firm must reimburse FDA for cost of inspections, and the FDA may shut down the facility if future violations were found. Just a quick review of some of these things. It gives you an overall sense of where things are going with the FDA and how they may approach different situations with consent decrees. Shearing Plow, May of 2002, a number of years ago now, they had a disgorgement fee of $500 million. That's a lot of money. $15,000 per day for non-compliance. It was capped graciously at $175 million for not meeting timelines. Watson went in one around the same time. There was no fine. 26 products were covered with that. Elon, again, went through things, uh, covers Verapamil. FDA pursued after six years of failure by the company. Really critical with this, that you comply with these things up front. Wyeth, again, disgorgement, $30 million, $15,000 a day for noncompliance, capped at $5 million. Abbott, disgorgement of $100 million, $15,000 a day for noncompliance, capped at $10 million. A lot of money going into the treasury from these guys. Even more here, looking at this. Steris, FDA seized $50 million of what was deemed adulterated product. Firm halted production of 110 of its products. Vintage pharmaceuticals. FDA findings prompted recalls of 12 products. Alpha Therapeutics recall ordered for plasma. Uh, firm submitted uh, or firm was required to submit an audit biannually for two years, then annually after that period of time. A lot of work by a lot of people and a lot of money. Certainly, the warning signs of a consent decree coming your way repeat it for 83 items. I can tell you this if you don't fix the problem and the FDA keeps finding it, they are really going to start coming down with you on warning letters. And if you don't continue fixing it, they're going to hammer you with a consent decree. You have an inadequate response to a warning letter or you just re, uh, a request from the FDA for more information. There may be multiple inspections at multiple facilities and locations going on at the same time. That's a real key warning sign that a consent decree may be coming your way. That's a worst case scenario. may be a sign that a warning letter is coming your way more specifically. But if you're already in deep water with some problems at the agency, you probably want to start getting some legal counsel and some third-party help in there and uh, start working with them knowing that you're going to be really up the creek and you're going to need their help in a very short period of time. Delay or non-approval of regulatory filings is certainly a warning sign. You may get loss of government uh, contracts. And the FDA doesn't want to meet with you. They don't want to talk about it. They aren't going to comment on things. That is a real sign that they're working on something that is a regulatory action on your part. Uh, I can say, again, seek some legal counsel. Get some third-party help in there. Make sure you are working feverishly to get your house in order. Avoiding a consent decree. I can tell you this. Having gone through uh, working on a consent decree... Uh, the thing that I can tell you up front, avoiding a consent decree, don't get into the position of where you're even facing a consent decree. Work as feverishly as you can up front to be compliant. If you get 483s, don't have any repeat observations. If you get warning letters, work with the FDA to fix those things quickly, effectively. Get people in there to help resolve the problem. You do not want to face a consent decree. 
And I can tell you, immediate voluntary shutdown of suspect product areas shows the FDA you're really serious. Assess and evaluate your GMP status, ID the gaps, prepare a corrective action plan with dates, resume operations only after significant GMP compliance is obtained. Get help with this. Don't do it on your own. Obviously, you've had some issues, and if you think you're going to look at your own house and get it done, and it's sort of the old adage, the fox watching the hen house. You have to have help. Get it. I don't care where you get it from. Get good, qualified people in there to help you. Either you hire them in or you get a third party in there to get it done. It is very critical for you to go through and take immediate action regarding marketed products. Whatever it is, make sure you get that done quickly, effectively, well thought out. Assess each facility. If you own multiple facilities, go through each one. Look at the quality systems across all product lines to determine GMP compliance. ID the gaps, look at past 43s, look at past warning letters, look at common themes, fix it, fix it, fix it. It must be a global plan. Train and implement according to that plan. Make sure that you've got yourself covered. Arrange for a meeting with the FDA. Hopefully the FDA will at least meet with you. If not, maybe you can get legal counsel or the third party to arrange a meeting on your behalf so that at least they understand that you're trying your best. You've approached people, you're trying to get this stuff done. Get a third party in there and have them call the FDA on your behalf to go in and meet with them. Timing is critical. Present time frames. Make sure that you have something down that's reasonable, achievable, showing what you're doing. How, whatever it is you end up doing, have it prepared and go in and talk to the FDA about it. Present progress reports. Commit to the FDA that you will do this frequently to make sure that they are aware that you're working on being in compliance. You have to tell the FDA your culture is changing now and it is toward compliance. If you can't get that done, you're, you're real trouble. And I tell you, you've got to really hammer that home that you now have turned the, a, a new page, a new chapter in your company's history. You will be compliant. There is an ombudsman. If there are issues, you can try to call the FDA. You can try to work with them on issues. A lot of this goes into, I, I tell you this, get legal counsel, work with them to try to work with the FDA if anything that's going on. Get a third party expert to deal with the FDA, showing that they are there working on the compliance issues. Have both the, the legal counsel and the third party and your senior management deal with the FDA. I can say this, if you have questions on this, call us. If you need help immediately, call us. Get a hold of us. Send me an email. This is my email address. Send it to me. I have the phone that picks up email constantly. Uh, send it to me. I will try to get back to you. If not, call the office and try to get a hold of someone that can help you. Visit our website, compliance-insight.com. See if there's anything there that will help you out, try to understand your situation. There's a lot of things that can go on with this. We certainly have a, a, a protocol together for dealing with a, a consent decree. Call us on this. We can go over it with you. We'd be happy to come out and meet with you face to face. We would go to your facility and, and try to be there to help out and uh, get this in, in order and uh, get you out of this mess and hopefully we can help. And again, uh, thank you for listening to this. If you have any questions, give us a call and we'll try to help you out.